We can use the, sense, uh, the auditory system as a general viewpoint of sensory systems. So transduction, uh, what happens to take sound energy and convert that into a change in membrane potential, delta Vm. That's what happens here in the cochlea. And the receptor cells, actually the cochlea, the, I'm pointing to the semicircular canals, the cochlea is right there. That's cute. Anyway, so that happens in the cochlea, and the cells that do this are hair cells. Hair cells are the cells that have an unusual arrangement, and they have a long stereocilium and a series of smaller ones. So we'll get to exactly what they do shortly. And the information then is carried by ganglion cells, spiral ganglion cells, from the hair cell. So they gather information from hair cells. There's a synapse then onto a spiral ganglion cell dendrite, and then the spiral ganglion cell axon carries that information on into the brain. That is the key to ganglion cell function, gathering information and carrying it into the central nervous system. Well, that's what happens. All of that information, synapses, in the cochlear nuclei they're sitting right here. What happens next is that information from the cochlear nuclei can, some of it remains ipsilateral, but some of it crosses over and goes contralateral, so there's an incomplete decussation. And that incomplete decussation means that where these axons synapse in the superior olive, neurons are binaural. That information then through a couple of steps, there is finally an obligatory, that is a necessary synapse for all auditory brainstem in inputs. Right there, it's a structure in the midbrain called the inferior colliculus. And you can see it's gathering all information. It then targets a nucleus in the thalamus called the medial geniculate nucleus. So this um, accents the role that thalamus has, one of the key components of thalamus is that all discriminative information that makes it to cerebral cortex has to go, has to synapse first in the thalamus. So a synapse in thalamus, thalamic neuron, neurons then give rise to axons that terminate in an area of cortex that is by definition then auditory cortex. It's getting an input from the medial geniculate. It has to be auditory in function. So in the auditory cortex, there's a primary area, actually there's a set of primary areas that we call the core, and then there are association areas. Association areas are areas of cortex that get input from other areas of cortex that makes their primary drive. So, for example, primary auditory cortex would talk to an adjacent area, and that adjacent area is now responsive to acoustic stimulation because it gets an input from the primary auditory area, so association areas, and they come in a couple of varieties, one's called the belt, and the other is the parabelt, and we'll talk about those uh, separately. So auditory information starts with transduction, it ends in perception, and we'll have to deal with the fact that in the association areas of auditory cortex are those areas that are devoted toward recognition of sound. What is it? What does it mean? And then there are areas that are devoted toward figuring out where the sound came from. Where is it? And so we'll look at those a little bit later on.